Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at different ways that we can find the greatest common factor of a set of numbers. Please make sure you either split your screen to take your notes in Notability or have a printout of this note page so that you can fill it out as I go. We're going to start in this upper left hand quadrant. Greatest common factor or another way you'll hear people talk about it is referring to it as the GCF is the largest number or largest factor that two or more numbers share. Um, one thing I want to point out here is that a factor is a number that divides into a number evenly. Sometimes when we're looking at numbers, the only factor that they share is 1. Now, it doesn't mean that the numbers are prime. It just means that they're what's called relatively prime. It means that when you compare them to each other, they have nothing in common. For example, 8 and 9 would be relatively prime. Even though 8 isn't prime because it can be divided by 2 and 4, and 9 isn't prime because it can be divided by 3, they don't have any common factors except for 1. So let's look at a situation when we would actually use greatest common factor. If we had 36 candy bars and 54 packs of gum that were donated for gift bags for open house at school. We want each bag to have the same number of candy bars and the same number of packs of gum. So we want to know what's the greatest number of gift bags that we can make. Now you might notice that this relates to some of the problems that we've been doing in class, like the flower garden problem, because what we're taking are these items and we're putting them into smaller groups, but these smaller groups have to also be equal. So I'm going to look at three different methods that we can start to use to find the greatest common factor of these two numbers. Our first method that we're going to look at is either called the table or the list method. This is a really popular method um, and a lot of students tend to be familiar with it. However, there are some problems that come up when we look at it. When we do this, because it's a list method, what we're going to do is we're really just going to come up with a list of all the factors of these numbers. So a lot of times what I would do is I would look at, well, 36, um, and I would start with 1 times 36 and look through my factor pairs. And then I might use my multiplication table and see that 2 times 18 is 36, 3 times 12 is 36, 4 times 9 is 36, and then our last one is just 6 times 6 is 36. So that would be all of our factors of 36. Now I'm going to repeat that process with 54. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well how am I supposed to know all of these different factors? And that is where we run into the problem with some of these numbers. Because if you don't know all the factors, it's super easy to miss some of them as you're going. So I would do 1 times 54. 54 is even, so I know that it's divisible by 2. In this case it's going to be 2 times 27. 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 is divisible by 3, so I know 54 is divisible by 3. In this case, it is 3 times 18. And I work these out ahead of time, so don't think that I just know all of these off the top of my head. Um, 4 does not work, but I do know that 6 times 9 is 54. Now that I have my list, what I hope are all of the factors, I'm going to go through and I'm going to circle all of their common factors. So they share 1, a 2, 3, 6, 9, 18, and that's it. So our greatest common factor, or our GCF, 
in this case is the largest one that we circled. So 18, so it would be, this would mean that that is, if we look back at our original question, the greatest number of gift bags that we could make. So I wanna make sure that I also label that on my answer. So that's strategy number one. It works really well for those people that are familiar with their factors. Uh, however, like I said, it can be time consuming and you can also sometimes miss some of the factors as you're going. So let's look at a different strategy. The second strategy goes back to that prime factorization that we did as we started this unit. With this particular method, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each number and I'm just going to break it down into its prime factors. So I'm going to take 36 and 54 and do my factor trees because that's the strategy that I like. So 36, lots of different ways I can get 36 as we saw before. First one that popped in my head is 6 times 6. 6 is not prime, so I would do 2 times 3, 2 times 3. All of these are prime, so 36 is equal to 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Now I know when we did prime factorization, I encourage you to write it out with exponents. For the strategy that we're using here, it actually works better if you leave it in its expanded form, so not writing with exponents. Now I would ask you to pause the video and try the same thing with 54. Do the factor tree and see what you come up with, with the, for the prime factorization. Now your thinking might not be the same as mine, but your factorization should be the same no matter which factors you ended up using. For me, 54, the first one that pops in my head, is 9 times 6. And then I would do 3 times 3 for 9. 2 times 3 for 6 again, and now 54 is going to be 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Once again, because we're finding what they have in common, I'm going to circle everything they have in common. So they have a 2, a 3, and a 3. One thing that comes up with this method that always um, tends to confuse students is they think that the numbers have to be stacked right above each other in order to be circled. It doesn't matter where they are, and this is why I like to write my numbers in order from least to greatest because it makes it easier to find those common factors, um, but the numbers don't have to be stacked above each other. So now, to find our greatest common factor, we're going to multiply all the things that they had in common. But because they're shared, we're only going to take one for each circle. So in this case, we have one, two, three groups. So I'm only going to have three numbers that I'm multiplying. So I'm going to have two times three times three. Or in this case, two times three is six. Six times three is 18. So once again, we have 18 gift bags. This was the strategy that I learned growing up. It works really, really well as long as you are good at factoring, but once again, it can kind of take a while. There is a third strategy, however, that you can use, um, and this was one that was introduced to me just a few years ago, and I wish I would have been taught it in school because I find it to be very efficient um, for when you are working. And I'm actually going to show you how we could do this even with a third number. In this case, our num third number is going to be 72. If you remember from our prime factorization notes, it kind of leads off of that. So it's going to be the latter method. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my three numbers. In this case, so it's going to be 36, 54, and 72. And I'm going to draw that first rung of the ladder or my first layer of the cake. The thing that I like about this strategy, unlike when we used it for prime factorization, is I can pull out any factor that I can think of that the numbers that are on my layer or on my step 
have in common. So if there's just two numbers, I could just pull out a number for that. If there's this third number, anything that I know that all three share. In this case, all three numbers are even. So even if you got stuck, we could at least pull out a two. And since we could use a calculator, you could have that to the side or your multiplication table. So 36 divided by two is gonna give me 18. And then I'm gonna do 54 divided by two. It's gonna be 27. And 72 divided by two is 36. I'm gonna draw another layer to my cake. I'm gonna repeat the process. So now 18, 27, and 36. They're not all even, but I know from experience or using my multiplication table that here, all three numbers are divisible by three. So now I'm gonna do 18 divided by three, and that's gonna give me six. 27 divided by three is nine. 36 divided by three is 12. Draw another layer. Now I look, 6, 9, and 12, what do they all have in common? I find that they share another 3. Repeat that same process. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Draw another layer. Now when we look, I have three numbers. I have 2, 3, and 4. So the only thing that all three have in common is the number one. So at this point, since the only thing they have in common is one, I would put that outside. And at this point, we would be done um, factoring out because we have factored out all of their common factors. My next step to find the greatest common factor is to now, just like the prime factorization strategy, use all of these numbers that are off to the side or are common factors that we were able to take out of our three main numbers, and I'm going to multiply them. Two times three times three. If you want to include the one, you can. Um, but again, we're gonna have 18 gift bags as our answer. Now you might be thinking, this isn't always gonna be the case. I purposely picked a third number where the greatest common factor was still the same as the first two, um, but that wouldn't always be the case. We could have picked a different number where the uh, greatest common factor could have either, um, could have actually decreased uh, as we were going through this. So just be aware of that, but I wanted to give you an example where you could actually work with three numbers since that will come up at times too.